and somehow I am trapped inside a rope. Some of these clues... I'm very stressed out. ...are really tricky. This is not the time to get chicken. Hey everybody, it's Molly. And Breedlove. And we're here at the Magic Kingdom for another Disney World Ultimate Race. My strategy yeah. today is I'm pretending I'm not in the Magic yeah. Kingdom. Pretend you're not in the Magic exactly. Kingdom. That's a really good yes. strategy. Because all I'm gonna see, I'm not gonna see magic. I'm not gonna see gonna see pixie dust. You're gonna see my dust. I'm just gonna as see I beat you in this squares game. with my name on it. Mm. Three, go time. Two, one, go. Okay, here we go. So we have two minutes again to sit and look at this board. I cannot wait to get my thoughts organized about this. Let's take a look. Unscramble. Oh no. Word things? My brain doesn't do that. Hitch my horse. Ooh, that's Frontierland. This is a hard board. Selfie in front of Mr. Toad's old home and send it to Duckfist. Oh my gosh. Get ready, Pooh. And I mean, Winnie the Pooh. Go to space. Well, I'm already in space, so can I cross that one off right now? So the first thing I'm going to do is, it says share where grown-ups can get covered in glitter. Now, unfortunately, I don't think they're doing it right now, but we'll double check. It's inside here at Sir Mickey's, which is a merchandise shop here in Fantasyland. You've got a bunch of princess stuff in here, princess dresses. Also, hey, Willie. Uh, Willie the Giant is here. Um, but you, this is where you can get princess dresses and tiaras and shoes and, oh my gosh, do I need this? I don't need that, right? A castle playset. I I'm an adult. I don't need that. Um, I'm gonna double check that they're not doing the glitter here. In the pre-closure days, you could come in here and talk to a cast member, and they had a magic wand that was full of pixie dust, and they would pour it all over your head, and it would be amazing. And it didn't matter how old you were, and it was completely free. They did it here um, and the store right across the way. But unfortunately, right now they're not doing it for safety reasons. But I talked to my producer and they said since nowhere in the park is doing it um, and I am where they used to be able to do it, that that one counts. So we just got our first square. Okay, here we go. I am starting out inside the castle. I am going to go to this beautiful, beautiful mosaic that I love so much that is all of the story of Cinderella. Here's the happy ending. We're going backwards. Oh my gosh. There is the glass slipper. And look at the evil stepsisters. And this is something I cannot take credit for, this piece of knowledge but they are green-faced and red-faced because they are green with envy and red with rage over the fact that their sister, their stepsister, Cinderella, fit the magical glass slipper. I'm checking in, everybody. Here we are together. Do we make an awesome trio? Yeah, I bet we do. All right, we got a box. Let's keep going. While we're here, I'm going to go over to this stone princess and curtsy to her. This is the Cinderella fountain. And you've got Cinderella sitting right here and she's got her little bird friends. And what's really cool about this fountain is that adults, if they look at it, her crown doesn't fit right. You have to bend down to drink your water to put the crown on her head because she's the princess. But you got to bow to her. But I have to curtsy to her, actually. So we're headed into Liberty Square. Let's see what we can get here. If we can find a place to hitch our horse. Okay, let's find chicken here. All right, so we've got sweet and spicy chicken on this menu. That is one of the selections out of six. So let me cross that off real quick. So my strategy right now is to, wait, hold on. Sorry, I got distracted telling you my strategy. 
because I'm going to tell you that there's a clock right here. And I have to find six clocks and sing a love song at each one. So this is the fast pass return for Fairy Tale Hall, which is where you can meet the princesses normally. Not right now, unfortunately, but normally this would be your fast pass return for Cinderella and Elena. And since I have to sing a love song, it makes sense that I sing one from Cinderella. So this is love. So this is love. So this is what makes life divine. I'm all aglow and now I know the key to all heaven is mine. One clock down. If there was a clock on one side of Fairy Tale Hall, then there is sure to be a clock on the other side of Fairy Tale Hall. So here we have the other Fast Pass Plus return entrance. This one was typically Rapunzel and Tiana. And again, you can't meet them right now, but when you could, it was a great spot because there's an air conditioning. You can meet four princesses. Yeah? A clipboard. Yeah. Are we at it? I win? Oh my gosh, thank you. You're amazing. There really is one. Okay, I will. Do you know do you know any love songs? Any love songs? Yeah. That's a beautiful song. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Bye. And at last I see the light. And it's like the fog has lifted. And it's warm and real and bright. And something, something new. That's good enough. Oh my goodness. A cavalcade is coming. So let's see. While everybody's back here, if we can find any of these clues around the corner here, find three restaurants based on old Disney shorts. Wait a minute. Did we just pass sleep? Did, did I find that on the menu too? Oh my gosh. I am such a ditz brain. Find three rest restaurants based on old shorts. On my way to Seven Doors Mine Train, I wanted to point out these delicious loaded buffalo chicken tater tots here at Friar's Nook because I'm supposed to find chicken on six different menus and Friar's Nook is our first one. I love those loaded buffalo chicken tots. You can also do a bratwurst here. You can do um, mac and cheese loaded tots. I'm partial to the buffalo chicken, not just because they helped us get a point, but this is a great little snack stand here in Fantasyland. I am hilarious and I forgot one of the other squares was find three restaurants based on Disney shorts, old Disney shorts. And guess what? Here is Sleepy Hollow, which is from Ichabod and Mr. Toad. This is the story of the Headless Horseman in Sleepy Hollow. And this is one of the three restaurants that I am going to find today that is based on an old Disney short. I'm marking it down as one. I'm going to stand outside of Seven Doors Mine Train, which is a super fun attraction, 38 inch height requirement, probably the most popular ride in the Magic Kingdom right now. It's one of the newest rides. It's really fun. It combines a car that not only goes forward, but it rocks back and forth like a mine car. It's part dark ride. It's really, really fun, but I have to name eight opening day attractions in front of it. Haunted Mansion, Jungle Cruise, Hall of Presidents, Peter Pan's Flight, The Mad Tea Party, Five, The Carousel, but it was called something else, but it was The Carousel, Dumbo, and The Walt Disney World Railroad. That's eight. I'm gonna freeze for two minutes, like I did before in Animal Kingdom with Melissa. Those scary birds are coming. Do they think I'm food because I'm standing so still? <gasps> Something just touched my leg. And I am going to hope that Molly doesn't get too many squares while I'm frozen for two minutes in front of Madame Leota's home, who is Leota Tombs, who is legendary 
OG Imagineer who is uh, the face uh, inside the globe who plays Madame Leota. She's also the bride at the end of the ride who says, hurry back, hurry back. Be sure to bring your death certificate. Make final arrangements now. <laughs> We've been dying to have you. So here we are at Leota's house and I am going to stand here for two minutes. I'm standing completely, completely still. I think my strategy right now is get the ones that I think Breedlove knows too so that I get them first because I'm kind of banking on some of these clues are really tricky and I'm kind of hoping he maybe doesn't know them so I can get some of these other ones first and then scoop back and get the ones he passes. So I am supposed to send a selfie in front of Mr. Toad's old home to your pal and mine, Duck Fist. Hi, Duck Fist. I love you so much. Miss you. Oh, I got a text message. That's from Molly. I wonder what she's up to. Hi, Duck Fist. I love you so much. Miss you. Winnie the Pooh. What am I, some joke to you? You know, that's it. We're going. If you're not familiar who Duckfist is, you definitely got to tune into RTT. He is obsessed with Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, which it used to be right here in front of the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. But unfortunately, uh, Mr. Toad isn't as marketable or well-known as Winnie the Pooh, so they changed it over. And I do love the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Slow moving attraction, no height requirement, great family fun, you get to bounce with Tigger, and it's a great time. Now, speaking of no height requirement, I'm supposed to find five rides without one. So here's one. Whilst outside, I noticed there's also a clock right here at the Fast Pass entrance, and look how cute it is. It's like a little cuckoo clock, and Pooh in a honey pot is the cuckoo. So I need to sing another love song. Sha la 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 my oh my, looks like the boy too shy. Go on and kiss the girl. Whoa whoa, sha la 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 la, ain't that bad? And in a shame, so sad, you gonna miss the girl. Whoa whoa. It's like I forgot all the lyrics, but I think that counts as a love song because it's about kissing and that's nice. I'm just imagining how many things Molly's getting right now. She's probably one by now. She, in, in this amount of time, Molly could have an entire line. As I'm walking, I found another clock. This is the old meet and greet area for Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. Again, they're not meeting right now, but they are in the, one of the cavalcades. So I'm gonna sing you yet another song. I know you, I walked with you once upon a dream. I know you, the gleam in your eyes is so familiar a gleam. Sleeping Beauty. Why do I always get on right? We did it, so that was two minutes? Okay, we did it, we're crossing it off the list. Okay. For my next ride with no height requirement, I'm gonna go to the Mad Tea Party. This is the teacups. I do not recommend riding it right after you've eaten, but you can control how fast you spin the cups. It's a delightful attraction, definitely a must do, but definitely not for the light stomach. And I notice while I'm here, there's also a clock. So more singing for you. Can you feel the love tonight? Tonight, it is where we are. Feeling true and nervous. Love is where we are. Now I'm the bird flying like in Festival of the Lion King. Does anyone else think of that show when they hear that song? The bird like... No, just me, that's fine. Let's go. All right, so I just froze right there but I'm also counting this as one ride with no height requirement. I am headed to Storybook Circus now because I bet I can find another clock there. 
and I can also find another height requirement list ride. But as I was walking, I like to look down in the Disney parks because you're gonna find a bunch of details that way. And I'm supposed to find three different sets of footprints. And as you can see, a carriage has come through here and it's got horseshoe footprints going in to Storybook Circus. So that is our first footprint that we found. I always say, look down in Disney parks, you're missing a bunch of the details if you don't. I have a little bit of an advantage. I'm gonna tell you a secret right now that my name is Breedlove and I'm the producer in the Molly Trapped videos, okay? So I trapped her in Liberty Square for Thanksgiving and I know that Paul Revere famously put lanterns in a window to alert whether the British were coming by land or by sea. There would be one lantern in the window if it was by land and two lanterns in the window if by sea. This is a brilliant little touch the Imagineers included here. Two lanterns signifying by sea, the British are coming, but we got a square. Okay, we are now headed over here to the Tangled bathrooms because this is where Pascal is hidden around in this area and I need to find seven of them. And oh my gosh, this might be a lot harder than I thought it was. Oh no, I'm not seeing anything that looks like a Pascal at all. I'm walking to Storybook Circus because uh, I know I can get more footprints here. There's elephant footprints here. Dumbo is a height requirement list ride, but I'm also working on this um, anagram because I think it's gonna be something in Storybook Circus because of the magic act. And it's all about the circus and stuff here and doing different acts. So I think, I actually think I know it. Pascal, Pascal, where are you buddy? B a R N S T O Look for friends R of Pascal and the scenery hidden among the flowers and greenery. E B A Oh my gosh, Pascal, where are you? A R N S T O R M E R Barnstormer! I have been standing here for about two minutes, yet again, looking for a single Pascal, let alone seven. So I'm gonna have to just eat this one and move on because I can't waste any more time here searching for Pascal. I'm sorry, buddy, I love you, but. Okay, we've got Dumbo the Flying Elephant, an absolute must-do classic right here. And it has no height requirement. I feel like if you don't take your kids on Dumbo on their first visit to Disney World, no matter how old they are, um, I really don't think you're allowed to come actually. So make sure you take on Dumbo. It's a charming, charming attraction, an absolute must ride. And now that they have two Dumbos, as opposed to just the one behind the carousel, the line is usually really low. Like it's a pretty busy day today and it's only a 10 minute wait for Dumbo. Also, while we're here at Dumbo, boom! That's clock number six, the fast pass return for Dumbo. So I have to sing to you again. If I never knew you, if I never felt this love, I would have no feelings of how precious life can be. I'm so grateful to you. That's all I have for you. But that was supposed to be played when Pocahontas goes to visit John Smith in the tent before his execution, but they cut it because the movie was getting too long, but you can hear a version of it in the credits. And if I didn't know that, if I never knew this, it would not have, we wouldn't have gotten our last clue. So now we got that whole box. Wait a minute. Is that a hitching post? Do I spy in front of Prairie Outpost and Supply? Would this be considered? Is this a hitching post? Is this a hitching post? 
that I am officially claiming hitching post right now. Here is the spot that we're gonna get a couple of these boxes, I hope. So first off, we've got Pecos Bill, who is the star of a short, a classic Disney short. So this is one of the three restaurants that we need to find in order to check off that box, which is great. I'm gonna check that off. We're also gonna look here because I know if we can find a physical menu, even though it just says fajitas, tacos, bur burgers, nachos, and churros, this place definitely has chicken. So that is awesome. We get another one of those and we got another quick service or we got another restaurant themed after a classic Disney animated short. As I make my way to the Barnstormer, this is actually some of my favorite floor in Disney World. I love the floors, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, and you can see that you've got elephant footprints right here, as well as peanuts, how cute is this? And the elephants and the peanuts are right here outside of Dumbo. And that is our second set of footprints. But I'm not kidding y'all, if you wanna know some good Disney detail action, look down. Like in Galaxy's Edge, they literally got the original R2-D2 to roll them around to make droid footprints. I wonder if I should go over there to get that one. But there is so much detail on the ground in Disney parks, it absolutely astonishes me. And I'll be, I have found another set of footprints. That's a bear, everybody. Roar, who could that belong to? Maybe somebody that's over here in the circus? Maybe that, maybe it's a monkey. No, it's a bear. It looks like a bear. Don't we think that's a bear? Animal experts, is this a bear? I think it's a bear. Doesn't matter, it's another set of footprints. So I unscrambled the anagram and it said, do a magic act nearby. And the word was Barnstormer, which is this sweet little children's coaster right here. It's the perfect starter coaster if your kids are um, not been on a coaster yet. It only has a 35 inch height requirement. So it's lower than the other coasters in the park. Super duper short. So if your kids are like not into it, it'll be over before they know it. And it features the great Goofini which is why I thought it might be over here because it's all about the circus and this is the circus act of flying. And I have to do a magic act. Oh gosh. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being with us today. My name is the amazing Malio and I am gonna do an incredible trick for you now. Abra, Cadabra, there it is. Ma'am, could you please pull that out of the hat? Do you know what that is? That's my win. <laughs> Okay, taking a look at the board here, I could win if I go to space, but that means getting on Space Mountain, which has a 40 minute wait, or Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, which has a 30 minute wait, or Astro Orbiter, which has a 40 minute wait. And that feels like a waste of time because he could get so many things and he could somehow have beaten, he might be going to Space Mountain right now. So I'm gonna try and rack up a few more. Um, no one's done anything on Main Street. So I may try to rack up a few more before I actually get in line to go on a ride in, in Tomorrowland. On my way to Tomorrowland, I'm stopping by the Cheshire Cafe um, because I have to find three closed restaurants and say what I miss about them. And what I miss about the Cheshire Cafe are Cheshire Cat Dales, which are these lovely chocolate pastries with pink and purple frosting on them. But actually you can get them at Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe across the street right now. So you don't have to miss them too much. But I also miss the fact that they sold slushies here. And I really like slushies in the park because it's always really, really hot. And sometimes a, a raspberry, like a, a red raspberry or strawberry raspberry or a lemonade slush is really hits the spot. And you could get them right there at Cheshire Cat Cafe. So in order to get the square that says go to space, I have to either ride Astro Orbiter, Space Mountain, or Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Obviously you go to space in all of those rides. I'm going to need to block her after I get Casey's corner right here. But this is Casey's corner. And this is my third restaurant based on a very, 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 very sweet Disney classic animated short called Casey at the Bat. And that's number three. Let's cross it off. So right here is the former home of Stitch's Great Escape, which was an attraction that replaced the extraterrestrial alien encounter um, because they thought that was too scary. But Stitch's Great Escape wasn't great. At one point, Stitch literally burped a chili cheese dog 
in your like ear and face. I didn't care for it. I'll say that. I don't feel bad about saying that, and I don't think I'm alone. Um, but this is his old house, and I have to say five. Lilo, are there even five characters in Lilo and Stitch? Uh, Lilo, Stitch, uh, Juba, Pleaky, Nani. Is her sister named Nani? No, is Juba an alien? Pleaky, Juba, Lilo, Stitch, Nani, not Juba, that's not a thing. Can I say Angel? That's his girlfriend in the spinoffs. All right, Angel, that's Stitch's girlfriend. So we got five, we got five. You know how much I love Tomorrowland, but guess what? Today is not about having fun. Today is about winning this game. So I am walking into Tomorrowland, which is probably my favorite land in the Magic Kingdom. And I am not going to enjoy myself at all. I'm focused only on winning. Come on, I don't have time to talk, let's go. Also, while we're here in Tomorrowland, this is my next attraction with no height requirement, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. This is one of those shooting games with my boy Buzz Lightyear. You are helping him defeat the evil Emperor Zerg by shooting the aliens that have the batteries. I love this attraction. Not just because Buzz Lightyear's in it, because I'm super competitive, if you can't tell, by these scavenger hunts. And we're gonna go over to another ride without a height requirement right over here. Great. Molly's in Tomorrowland too. What is Molly doing in Tomorrowland? <sighs> the People Mover is also a ride without a height requirement. It's up here in the sky of Tomorrowland. It zooms you around, it goes into Space Mountain, it goes into Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. You see a model of the experimental prototype community of Tomorrow, which is what Walt originally envisioned as Epcot, and it's excellent. So that is our fifth ride without a height requirement. Whilst I'm here, I see myself a blue alien over here. Stitch is out. Now, Stitch and Buzz Lightyear do rotating meet and greets on these stages right now. They are distanced, so you can't get too close to them, but you can come stand in front of the stage and take a selfie with them and such. I normally would be, not gonna lie, a little upset to see Stitch, not anything against Stitch, but I love Buzz Lightyear so much. However, today, when I have to see a blue alien and do an Elvis impersonation near it, I'm delighted to see Stitch. Okay, here is our status. So Molly is able to get a straight line right now by going to space. She and I are both currently in Tomorrowland. I checked the My Disney Experience app and of the three rides that take you to space in Tomorrowland, Buzz Lightyear has a currently 30 minute wait while Astro Orbiter and Space Mountain each are at 40 minutes. <sighs> but it's super weird. Molly and I are in very close proximity in Tomorrowland and she could be going for the same box. I don't know what's happening right now, everybody, but I'm trying to keep my composure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Stitch. Well, well, well. Hello. Hello. Are you gonna go see my buddy Buzz Lightyear? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm yeah. probably gonna go to space. I don't know. That's, yeah, that sounds fun. Like a, I don't know, I just felt like going to space. Yeah. You know me. I, yeah, I, I'm, that, I'm sounds, so that sounds cool. Random, like when I'm in Disney yeah. World, I just like, you know. Yeah, you should You should go to space. You should wait in this. I'm not 30, trying to win a game No, you should, you should wait yeah. in this 30 minute line to go to space. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll, bye. I'll see you, bye. Well, great, I just ran into Molly. And now I'm in my head about standing in line for 30 minutes. Surely she was just trying to psych me out, right? I mean. All right, friends. We kind of have Breedlove exactly where we want him because if he wants to beat me, he has to, like at this point, he's doing the smart thing and trying to block me because I'm very close to winning on two different lines as long as someone goes to space. But while he's waiting in this very long line to ride Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. That's what I should be doing. What am I doing being in line for this? Let's get out of line. I'm gonna head towards Main Street to rack up several clues on Main Street and then hopefully also get to Liberty Square before he can figure out 
the Ichabod clue. I can't believe I'm accidentally doing the same man maneuver that Quincy did, but we are secretly sneaking out of line because I just realized we can just walk to Main Street and find the most expensive item there. I've got to make sure Molly doesn't see us though. Wait, <laughs> I swear this was not planned. I, you know that I'm bad at strategy. I just literally am so bad at it that I just started to wait in a 30 minute line until Molly gave me shade about it. And I was like, but how else would I do it? And then I realized, wait, I'm just getting one box of two that I would need to block her. So what I need to do right now is go to Main Street and find the most expensive item. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Oh my gosh. We are taking the side walkway and we are passing Tomorrowland Terrace and we're gonna look at the menu because it's from Columbia Harbor House and they have fried chicken. So hopefully fried chicken will be on this menu out in public somewhere. <gasps> There's Molly. On my way to Main Street, I'm gonna rack up another chicken right here. This is the Tomorrowland Terrace. Now they're not open right now, but they are open. Sometimes it's just weekends only right now. And they are serving restaurants from the Columbia Harbor House, um, like the lobster roll, the fish and chips. But one of the things they are serving, chicken breast nuggets. You can get them on the kids meal or you can get them as part of the combo for the adults. We can't get chicken. This is not the time to get chicken. As we are continuing to walk along, we're gonna take a look at the plazas menu here. This is a full service restaurant here on Main Street. It's really quaint, it's really kind of quiet. Um, they serve really great milkshakes and it's very understated, but it is definitely a nice restaurant. And I'm gonna see if I can get up close and see if they have chicken. No. Is she seeing us? No. Is she seeing us? We gotta find the most expensive thing on Main Street. I think we should check Crystal Arts. Shockingly, the plaza doesn't have any chicken right now, but that's fine. That's all fine. We're gonna go right next door. Well, first we're gonna wave to the characters because honestly, it would be rude not to. Now, I know this is a very beautiful, very expensive item. I don't know exactly how much it is. Wait, this one's 49,000. Um, I think I got it. 49,000, most expensive item on Main Street. Like, what could be more expensive than that, honestly? The plaza may have yielded nothing, but I can stand right out here in front of the plaza ice cream parlor because this is our second closed restaurant. And let me tell you what I miss about the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. I miss the children's single scoop ice cream cone because when you get a children's cone, they just put one delicious scoop of ham packed ice cream and then they put two little chocolate discs on it to make it a Mickey. And it's awesome and I love it. And I'm sad there's nowhere to get like really good hand scooped ice cream right now. They also have great sundaes here. They have a brownie sundae. They have an all American sundae that's got peanut butter and stuff on it. But for me, I just love a simple scoop of strawberry or cookies and cream. With those little Mickey ears. And I'd like them to reopen. While we're on this restaurant kick, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you about Casey's Corner, which is right here on the other side of Main Street USA. Hot dogs, French fries, corn dog nuggets. And that's what I miss about Casey's. I don't personally care for hot dogs but my goodness, a corn dog nugget dunked in some plastic cheese. And you can get corn dog nuggets at Westward Ho and Pecos Bills right now, but it's not the same as getting corn dog nuggets from Casey's and sitting on the hub grass and enjoying a treat and looking at the castle. Anyway, that's three, we got the square. So I saw Love. He clearly got out of line from Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. He got the most expensive item on Main Street and then I could see him in a distance pointing at the windows and grapevining beautifully, might I add, um, down Main Street. So he blocked me from getting that straight line, which means the only straight line left is the diagonal where I have to go to space. Am I exhausted from grapevining all the way down Main Street? Yes. Did I see a bunch of cool windows that I've never stopped to look at before? 
Absolutely. Am I gonna do it all the time when I'm here? You bet. I don't even know where Molly is right now. Do you know where Molly is? Has anybody seen Molly? I have a feeling that she's on the way to going to space. I'm gonna go for Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin because I am gonna hope that the love and affection that I feel for Buzz Lightyear will power me to my victory. I am walking confidently, briskly maybe. That's probably arguable. I'm strolling, let's be real, to Space Mountain where I'm going to get in a line and hopefully go to space before Molly has a chance to. Hello, Buzz. I love you so much. We got this, pal. All right, we really are moving and grooving now. It has not been anywhere near 40 minutes. We're not on yet, but we are really moving quickly. So fingers crossed that Breedlove didn't somehow get on Space Mountain or Astro Orbiter faster than us. This is where we are, though. You know, we're like kind of close, but actually not close at all. So we'll see. <laughs> Done it again. I went to space faster. I would really like to thank my hero Buzz Lightyear. Congratulations. Very thank you. Thank you for playing me again. Yes, thank you for playing. This is a great game. Definitely let us know in the comments who you want to see match up next, where you want to see us match up. If you've got clue suggestions, let us know that as well. Yes. And then just DM me the answers to them ahead of time. Yeah. Because I, I need some kind of head start here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, until next time, friends, make sure you rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Ears Net. And until next time, y'all, I'm Molly. I'm Breed Love. And it's been magical. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody, it's Molly. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Disney World Ultimate Challenge. If you'd like to play along, we've got the boards for you. Just head over to altears.net slash scavenger dash hunt, sign up for our free newsletter, and the boards are coming straight to your inbox. Make sure to like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you know when new episodes are coming out. And if you want more Disney World Ultimate Challenge, click over here to catch up on our Disney World Ultimate Tournament. And if you want more All Ears, click over here for a video where Duckfist gets a little too passionate about Mr. Toad. Thanks for watching.